Hey Christview, it is Sunday morning and once again we are doing church on video. So um, one of the things I want to talk about just today, just kind of have a devotion time with us on this Sunday, get our minds set and get us um, constantly always focused on the right thing and thinking about the right things instead of being caught up in the panic of the world and all those types of things is um, how often you see, especially in this time right now, where people get fixated on like one thing and stop thinking about everything else. And what happens when you do that is people get very much out of balance. People start experiencing um, uh, emotions, behaviors, reactions, uh, things that are out of character, things that are not normal, things that aren't healthy because they get so fixated on one thing they can't see everything else, they're blinded to it. And um, it's very hard for people to come into them and kind of shake them out of that place and kind of go, hey, you need to open your eyes to a little bit broader spectrum of things. And um, as humans, we tend to just get that, that um, what's that called, that um, tunnel vision. Um, and that's what you're seeing a lot of today. And uh, so I want to read you a scripture today because I think a lot of times in our Christian walk, we do the same thing, that we get tunnel vision. We focus on one area that maybe that we're good at or maybe one area that we're bad at. And we stop looking at the broader picture. We stop looking at the bigger overview uh, picture that's before us. And when we do that, we become un unhealthy spiritually. Uh, we do things that aren't um, in our character. We do things that we shouldn't be doing or we neglect to do things that we should be doing because we're just focused too much on one thing rather than having a broader spectrum, a healthier view of things. So uh, the scripture I want to read to you today, uh, it comes from uh, Mark chapter 12. And it's kind of interesting because what you have is the teachers of the law are trying to trip Jesus up at this point, and they're trying to find any reason they can to discredit his teaching, to discredit um, his integrity, um, and try to show the public that he's not who he says he is, and he's not as good as uh, they think he is. And the reason for that is people are trying to follow Jesus instead of the religious leaders at the time, and the way they made their money, the way they made their living was to keep people following them and be dependent on them. And now they're all starting to follow this guy named Jesus, uh, so they're starting to take a hit in the bank account. They're starting to take a hit in their personal self-esteem because people aren't following them as much. Um, and so they start trying to find ways to discredit him and get rid of him. And so what, one of the things they do is, is one of the teachers, it says, if you go to verse 28 of Mark 12, it says this. One of the teachers of religious law was standing there listening to the debate. He realized that Jesus had answered so well. So he asked, of all the commandments, which is the most important? And we know from other scriptures, the reason this guy's asking this is he's going, there's 10 commandments. I'm going to ask him what the most important one is. I'm going to expect him to give one, and then I can discredit him because he's saying the other nine aren't as important. Um, and he just gave one of them, and he selected one instead of saying all 10 are very important. So he's trying to trip Jesus up. But Jesus gives an incredible answer, uh, which neuters everything this guy was trying to uh, accomplish, and it uh, takes away all this guy's uh, power and ability to discredit him and it actually makes people step back and kind of go this guy's a genius who is this guy this guy's teaching is incredible it's like nothing we've ever seen before and so jesus's response is this he says the most important commandment is this listen O israel the lord our god is the one and only lord and you must love the lord your god with all of your heart with all of your soul with all of your mind and with all of your strength and the second is equally important, love your neighbor as yourself. No other commandment is as great as these. And so it's kind of funny, the two he gives have nothing to do with the Ten Commandments. Um, they are in broader spectrum, but they're not on the specifics. And so um, we find from other scripture, it kind of goes, if you follow these two things, you'll follow all the law. Uh, it'll make the rest of the law work out in your life. And so it's just a brilliant response. But I want to focus on the first thing he says because he gives four different sections of how we are to love God. It's not just a generic love God. It's not just love God this one way, but he gets four different ways we are called to love God. And he says, love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind, and with all of your strength. And this is important to understand that there's four areas of our lives that we have to love the Father in. Uh, and if we just get focused on one or two, what happens is usually we end up with some uh, things in our life that aren't healthy spiritually. Um, and we get that tunnel vision and we neglect things that we should be doing. So I want to walk through those four and go, what are those? How do we do those in our lives? What do they mean? And I'm just going to do this briefly. It's not going to take real long. Uh, but looking at those four, but also looking at what happens if we get tunnel vision on one and, and what the negative repercussions are in our lives if we do that. So the first one is love the Lord your God with all of your heart um, is the first one he starts. And the heart would be described just very generically as your emotions. Uh, love God emotionally, have, have an emotional 
connection to God is what he's telling you to do there. And that's a great thing to have, but there's a lot of people who get tunnel vision on that and go, that's what my entire relationship with God is. It's about loving God with my emotions. Um, and the, the real danger of that one is this. When you love God with just your emotions, is you become very um, easily manipulated by any other people that can uh, cause emotions in your life. Uh, so any other religion or false truth or false religion or um, experience or whatever, anything that can cause emotions in your life at that point, you can get sucked into. And before long, you start to find out I'm not following the Father anymore. I'm following these things because it's all about emotions. So whatever can spark the most emotion in you is the thing you tend to follow. So there, there's a real danger to only loving God with your emotions. And we have to be very cautious of that. Uh, the second one he talks about is he says, loving the Lord your God with all of your soul, okay? Now, the best way I can describe soul is it's a genuine um, love of the Father. It's a sincere love of the Father. It's that core eternal thing inside of you that you're not just playing a game. Um, you're not just doing it for others to see your appearance of what you're doing, but it's your soul. You, you genuinely love God with your soul, that it's a genuine act. It's a real act in your core you know it's genuine. It's not one of those things you're putting on a mask for others. It's not one of those things that you're trying to deceive other people and make them uh, think one thing about you when they, what's really happening in you is different. Uh, when it says, love the Lord your God with all of your soul, it's being genuine. It's having a sincere faith and love for God. Now, the problem that some people have, if you have tunnel vision on this, of just being sincere that I, I love God, I'm just sincere about it, is the problem we can get into is what I was thinking about is, uh, you don't really do anything for the kingdom of God uh, because you get content just going, well, I have a sincere love for God. I have a sincere trust in him and I know my salvation is taken care of. And you just don't think about other things. You just live your life out and do your things. You might even be a good person, morally good person, like the rich young ruler was. Uh, but uh, you also aren't doing kingdom work. You're not doing the things that God has set before you because you're just content because, hey, my soul's right. My soul loves God. I'm genuine about it. Um, and that's a very dangerous thing to be at because you miss out on a lot of other things God desires for you to accomplish and to do in your life. Uh, the third thing he tells us about loving God is to love God with all of our mind. Now, that one is loving God with your knowledge, so pursuing knowledge of your faith, um, a logical pursuit of your faith, um, understanding why you believe what you believe, understanding why the gospel of Jesus Christ, why the scriptures are true, and it's just not a religion you follow, but it's actually truth. And you have a, a good understanding of how that works and are able to logically explain that to other people and understand the intricacies of the gospel message, of the theology of it, uh, pursuing that in your life. Now, to be honest with you, this is what I enjoy the most. This is what most naturally comes to me. Um, so it's very easy for me to get tunnel visioned on this one. Uh, and we have to make sure that doesn't happen because the negative side of loving the Lord your God with just your mind is it leads to pride and judgmentalism. Um, if you're not careful that it can make you feel like you're a better Christian than others because you know more about your faith and you more, know more about the text of the scripture and you become very judgmental and prideful towards others. And when you get there, once again, you're not being a person God's called you to be, even though you can go back and go, I'm loving God with all my knowledge, um, with all my mind. Um, I'm loving him and going, yeah, but that doesn't mean what you're doing is right. That doesn't mean it's coming out healthy because you have tunnel vision in this one area. So again, we have to make sure we are balanced, that we are looking at all these areas. The last one he says is love the Lord your God with all of your, with all of your uh, strength. And that goes into service with uh, serving other people, doing things for other people, using your life and your energy to serve the kingdom of God. And although that leads to great things for others to see, the, the one uh, caution that we have from that, the one unhealthy thing it can lead to, is it can lead to us thinking that we are saved by our works, that we're the ones that save ourselves because look at all the stuff I do. And people that get tunnel visioned here will go, you know what, look at all the stuff I do, look at all the stuff I do. But when you look at their hearts, their hearts are still cold, uh, to God. Their hearts are not being shaped and molded by God. They're just doing check boxes. They're doing things they feel they're supposed to do in order to earn their way to heaven, to earn their way um, into the good graces of God. And the, the reality of it is you can't uh, because you're a sinner and there's nothing you can do to reverse what's happened in the past and you need the grace of God uh, to have a relationship with God and to live in his presence forever. So uh, that same one there, the tunnel vision is, is we start looking at like, I'm the one in control. If I just do enough right stuff, that gets me into heaven. 
And again, there's imbalance in your life and in your spiritual life. So the key here is this, is that we have to make sure we are well balanced in all these areas, that we love God with our heart, with our soul, with our mind, and with our strength. And we focus on all of those. And I can say it from my perspective, knowing what my strength is, I try to spend less time developing that one, even though it's my strength and make sure I'm trying to develop the other areas of my spiritual life as well, because I know those are, they're not, I don't even know if we would say they're always weaknesses, but they're things that are harder to focus on because we have certain strengths. So some of you, your strength will be loving God with all of your heart, with your emotions, that just comes natural. But you have to make sure you start looking to love God more with your soul, your mind, and your strength as well. Some of you, serving God with all of your strength comes natural, just doing stuff for the kingdom of God and all, but you have to be cautious and go, am I balanced in the other areas? Am I spending some time developing these things? Um, it's very important we are well-balanced spiritual people because if we are not, then it actually starts to cause some things to be detriments in our lives. We actually start to do harm for the kingdom of God at times because we're so focused on one thing, we're not seeing the broader picture. Uh, so my encouragement to you today would be this. Uh, find which of those that you struggle with right now, your heart, your soul, your mind, or strength, which is your weakest, and while we're on this extra free time most of us have right now, take some time and figure out how you can start developing maybe that a little bit better. Um, how you can focus a little bit more on that weak spot to make yourself a little bit more well-balanced. Because we all know both in life and both in our spiritual lives, the more well-balanced we are, the healthier we are, and the healthier we are, the more we're able to help other people. And the more we're able to help other people, especially on the spiritual side of things, allows us to be greater workers for the kingdom of God. So hey, have a great Sunday. Hopefully, as I always keep saying, hopefully soon we will see each other in the flesh. And it seems like some things are finally starting to turn. Um, and it looks like we'll start working as a leadership on some plans of how we will start getting back into um, some type of a, uh, a normal again, even as a church and how we function um, as a church together. So have a great one. God bless you. And hopefully we'll see you soon.